special guest in the house from the recipe with two E's, yeah. Omar. <laughs> so yes, is that man. actually recipe or recipe? A recipe band. A recipe. recipe band. All right, respect, man. You know, um, we're here, obviously, uh, paying uh, uh, an amazing uh, homage to uh, Bob Marley. Now, yeah, I guess the one thing I want to ask you was, what was your first Bob Marley song that you either learned to sing or learned to play? Tricky question, because both my parents actually are Rastafari, and they, they owned a record store. Um, because around the same time that Bob Marley was talking about struggles and everything that was going on politically, they were having a hard time getting work. So I listened to all kinds of music. If the, I'd say the first song that struck me with Bob Marley was Exodus. I think that was the first one, um, again, just thinking about what was going on with people at that time. And just speaking of the movement of Ja people, of God's people, and knowing that they, there needs to be an exodus, there needs to be a lot of change, like now, to make sure that there's a lot more equality and a lot more focus on, on the things that need to happen to shift the paradigm when it comes to having strength in our community. He's obviously influenced you as a person. He's obviously influenced you as, uh, in your life. How has he influenced your music in terms of, uh, you know, as, as, as a band? I think... Um, Myself, because the band is, is a collective of people, yeah. but I think for, in speaking for the band, I know that reggae music has a bunch of influences. And since we all have Jamaican background, Bob Marley is one of those very influential people who was a voice for the struggle, a voice for things that were happening in Jamaica and in Africa, and just struggles of black people all together. So we have a part of that culture rooted in, in everything that we sing. Right. And because of our cultural ties, we also have a great respect for the energy, the movement, the power. Um, again, Rastafari, I believe that words sound power. So especially, you know, these guys also play in church. So they understand that music can move, music can build, music can destroy. And Bob Marley specifically was about love, peace, and bringing a lot of focus to the things that need to be destroyed like a lot of the political things that have been going on that have been keeping our, our, our people in the same place for many years. All right. So what four Bob Marley songs will the Recipe Band be performing? We'll be performing Natural Mystic, Waiting in Vain, Is This Love, and Steer It Up. So why that selection of tunes? We think musically, those are the ones that we thought that we could reflect not only the easiest, but have the most fun with it. The reason they call us the Recipe is because we like to mix things up. And our blend over the years that we've been together and the blend of our skills and musical sets always give us a little bit more of an edge with our creativity with music. So we thought those ones were great. Nice. The beauty of this event, it's you know, created by foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, T.O. Legends, uh, Jones and Jones. Yes. Um, Kumba. Um, you know, what does it mean to you as a Canadian reggae artist, the fact that, you know, uh, Canadian institutions and, and, and legends like that can still put on an amazing show like this. It's a beautiful thing and it's, it's, it's relevant and exciting to know that, you know, even when my parents owned a record store back in the 80s, um, they grew up in a time where there were all kinds of different sound systems and people would bring in their speakers and their crates of, of, of 45s and, you know, to see the energy and the love that's happened then transform to where we are now where reggae is so influential, just like Afrobeats, but it's so influential and it's everywhere on all kinds of charts. So it's a, it's a very important thing that the, the relevance is here in Canada and that we're showing the, the homage. We're paying the homage to legends like Bob Marley, who've created the foundation for people like me to mm -hmm. learn about how to have poise in performance, how to have energy, how to be able to capture crowds and just share the love of reggae with, with everybody who enjoys yeah. it. You know, uh, can't avoid the fact of the times that we're in, obviously the pandemic, yep. we're also dealing with, um, you know, socially, uh, you know, social injustice, we're dealing with all kinds of uh, uh, troubling times. Yes. How have you dealt with that as, as, as a person and as a band? Because, you know, as a band, it shuts down, <laughs> you know, uh, one of the most important things that a band gets to do, which is perform live. Yeah, I think um, individually, like these are my brothers, you know, we've, we've been playing together for the last 10 years and uh, members of the band as well. Um, Otis, uh, Jonathan Kerr, 
uh, Juwayan Clark and Jason Larman. Those guys have known each other before that, growing up in church and high school and what have you. I know mm -hmm. Nisi and Clark, who's our sound guy. Um, they have, in, as individuals, they've all felt it because performance isn't easy. Right. I mean, if it's our bread and butter, not being able to perform really sucks. There are ways to have creativity in performing, doing things online, uh, but it's still not the same kind of energy. Having somebody stand in front of you, and you know as somebody who thrives off of interviews, right. when you have open banter with people, it's a very different dynamic. So when you miss the crowds, when you don't have the energy of people singing the lyrics and dancing, and the dynamic is, is, is you miss it. I crave performance, but you know, I, I think collectively we're all thankful that you know, we, we, we can still enjoy music in the ways we can and perform how and, and wherever we can. It's, it's, it's still something we've got to sit down and be, figure out a way to get used to because we don't know how long this is going to be around. The last, last question I want to ask you is, sure. so you're sitting there, mm -hmm. Bob Marley is sitting here, mm -hmm. you get to ask him one question. What question would you ask Bob? What was the one turning point that made him realize that his music had so much power and influence? Because a lot of the songs that Bob Marley has have been redone. Way back when, when Mento and Skia and even you know um, when we had music in the 50s and 60s with barbershop quartets, a lot of his songs were made in that flavor, but they progressed and he changed them. And I think part of the struggle and part of the things when he started paying attention to what was going on with black people, those things changed him. So I would love to hear how that spiritually shifted him and how he still remained humble knowing that he had such an influence with, with his creations. Amazing, fitting ending. <laughs> Great question. Man. Thank, Thank you, Omar. Thank Looking you. forward to the show tonight. Oh. 
Yeah. Very relevant song for right now. Hopefully everybody is staying safe wherever they are. Natural mystic blowing through the air. It's not the only thing blowing through the air. Be safe.